Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the opening contest, it's a heavyweight contest, six five-minute rounds, one fall, one submission, or knockout to decide. In the red corner, ladies and gentlemen, from Coconawaga, Quebec, Canada, War Eagle, give him a chance, give him a hand. from Crack Bell and Johnny Spencer. And your referee, Max Wood. Hello again, Grapple fans. Good afternoon to you, and welcome to the Sports Centre here in Crawley. Another freestyle wrestling session on its way to you. And we start this afternoon's programme with a heavyweight bout between Johnny Cheslov of Krakow, Poland, 15 stone one. His opponent in this preliminary bout, Johnny War Eagle from Kanabaga, Quebec, Canada, 16 stone two. No. 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 The completely uh, shaven head is Johnny Chester, of course, as the fans will know. But uh, the half shaven head, the Billy Two Rivers hairstyle, and the striped trunks belong to Johnny War Eagle from Quebec, Canada. Referee in this program this afternoon, Max Ward of Birmingham. We'll catch him in action pretty soon if I know Johnny War Eagle. He's only been on uh, television once, War Eagle, but uh, he has one or two of the tricks of Billy Two Rivers, including the tomahawk sharp, the back slap to the throat. No, no, no. <laughs> He's looked too, so similar, these two, in size and looks a little bit similar in style, too. There's Johnny War Eagle with the, the Mohawk Indian haircut. There's Max Ward. And an arm lock to chest off. And Worry, you're trying to get over the top of that head, coming behind it. Really work twice, but not quite. Now, has he got the counter here? Double wrist lock position if he can get it, if he can win with it. Just a couple of minutes he's got left in this first round of six. Six five-minute rounds. One fall to decide this bout. No. 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 Into the back hammer. Or, or no. operating this pretty well so far. Locked it off. Hammer lock now. No, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> nice <line. laughs> well, that's the no. 
most deliberate step of a leg lock I think I've seen operated, but nevertheless, it's effective. One minute now, round one. <laughs> it's a word he picked up when he first came over from Poland and he never stopped using it ever since. Just off again, the same account here, but in a beautiful throw over with just on the bell of round one. from Quebec, Canada, his reservation of Canavaga, the same reservation as the very famous name, Billy Two Rivers, who we know so well from the past. 16 stone two of Johnny War Eagle, and this is his first ap appearance in this country at all, as we've just seen him on television once a few weeks ago. Round two, five to go. One four decides this box. At heavyweight, Johnny Chesloff getting up from the deck there in the plain trunks. Versus the colorful Johnny Warrior from Canada. Nice cross buttock to follow down the cross press a little bit late. And Chesloff, I think, clear. Yes, clear all the time there. He didn't get that cross press as he wanted it at all and decides to give up on it. Oh, yes. Still with the arm lever held through by the wrist lock. And an inside leg hang to make him go over. And now he's got him there. Can he take advantage of it? the sweat coming off Johnny Chesloff and this is only the middle of the second round. Mind you, I presume it's pretty warm under these television lights, but uh, we're getting the overspill from them. The very sound. The first attempt at the Tomahawk chop by Johnny War Eagle gets nearer to the ref than it does to his target. Nice, but head scissors. Remember, it's the Canadian Johnny War Eagle in these striped trunks there. On the right of your picture now, with the head scissors on Cheslov.
Worrying you're turning around and Max Ward is is that if it lands, is it allowed? Late on the phone, Nelson, but that's it. The side had chance to throw, never arrived there. I wonder if it will in, in a minute. No. Again, the side had chance free now. But the uppercut forearm instead. And Cheslov's face looks as though he's saying, if that's the way you want to play it, all right, but I'd much rather wrestle. seconds left in this second round. What the <laughs> How many times has Johnny Cheslov worked that on an opponent? Now finally it's been worked back on him. Right at the end of round two. <laughs> stuff really he doesn't really lose some uh, sweat in this in this game this um, Johnny Chestnut he really pours it pours off look at that and this is only the end of the second round his opponent is um, only giving him trouble in this but simply because he's got a completely new style over here and Chestnut's not used to it but it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the next four Round three and four rounds to go, and here at the Sports Center in Crawley, a six-five minute round, one fall to decide contest at heavyweight between Johnny Cheslov of Poland, Johnny War Eagle of Canada, and is Cheslov giving away weight here and trying the full Japanese final hold on the, the Canadian, the striped trunks. And the Billy Two Rivers hairstyle, the Mohawk Indian hairstyle. There it is. Okay, bring it up the run. The first delivery of media has come in, but only temporary, I think. Okay, off the run. Referee Max Ward. No trouble until now, but it looks like it could be starting for him. He's <laughs> checking. Well, these specialities of the Canadian, the Tomahawk Chop, just like Billy Two Rivers used to operate. And he tried one, Chesler tried one back. But it's just like that says no more of that. Difficult to operate a chop from that angle, I should think. Even from that, when no, you're no, in no. a lever, like no. War Eagle is at the moment. No. There's Johnny War Eagle, right, right back to canvas with the striped trunks. Don't spread the fingers, <laughs> I'm telling you. 
Don't do that. You have it like that. That's it. So the whole hand, but not divide the fingers, says Max Ward. No. No. But that's a legitimate double-handed wrist lever by Ward. No. 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 I said no. Less than a couple of minutes in the third, and the chops coming thick and fast now from Warrior. That's the way. Now Johnny Chestov can attack freestyle wrestling. Moves to the feet, to the legs. Then he'll keep away from the chops. Leg spread, and he. If he holds it on for a long, long time, it's not going to do him any good unless he can get a submission from it. One fall decides this bout. Less than a minute to go in the third, and Chester has either got to go for something that will get a submission, or release that and go for another hold. Cross press, but too high. The body over the, the nose and mouth. And it's the left hand here of Cheslov's. Back to the legitimate stranglehold by Cheslov. Five seconds to go. It's very, very solid. You see Johnny Cheslov doing that. Had no excuse at all for that. And Max Ward is no doubt telling him in no uncertain terms. Quite unnecessary, and I don't think that Cheslov's style demands that sort of move after the bell. Johnny Eagle doesn't like it too much either. Second away, round four. Round four, three rounds to go. One fall decides it. Cheslov coming right to the opposing opponent's corner. A lovely posting, that one. Very good posting. War Eagle down now from a, an excellent posting. Buttes all the way across the ring, a real beauty. Ah, yes, remember Vinicius Rivers. There's the war dance. And the chops now coming fast. And the, the tomahawk shot and a butte. Yes. And to the throat, that one. But not until no trouble. A clutch hold and slam. And there it is. The reverse double knee hold. The Johnny Warriors of the winner in the fourth. The one fall necessary decide. And they're getting in the ring. Our MC, Bobby Palmer, to announce it. Again, ladies and gentlemen, the winner in round four, the very four required, a real eagle. Give me a hand, please. Thank you.
Jesus. Contest of six five minute rounds, one fall, one submission, or knockout to decide. In the red corner, ladies and gentlemen, from Sydney, London, Robbie Barron. Give him a hand, please. Thank you. In the blue corner, ladies and gentlemen, from Wigan, Lancashire, John Naylor. With Robbie Palmer, so John Naylor of Wigan. 11 stone 11, still just at the top of the uh, welterweight bracket. Robbie Barron, his opponent, well up into the uh, middleweight class now. There on the right in the lighter trunks. Robbie Barron, height advantage as well as weight advantage. One fall to decide this six round contest. Second away, round one. John Naylor in the uh, darker trunks, the blue trunks, and the bandage above the left knee. Of course, the winner of the World of Sport Trophy recently. The welterweight trophy. And even Robbie Barron up in the middleweights are going to have trouble against this boy from Wigan. He really is hot. Very, very slick wrestler indeed. Every move in the book and some of his own that aren't in the book and all legal. If you can't see the trunks at any time, the blonde hair of John Naylor should help identify. He wants one of those to come off, but out. Uh, John Nela able to reach the bottom rope, and that's the end of the bout. One fall decision. Side headlock now. Baron. He couldn't deliver the knee drop that he wanted to, Naylor, still in the side headlock. And worse off now because he's ground position back to campus, really fighting his way out. Couple of minutes he's got in this first round of six. That's a great late trip of Naylor's. He used that against Liam Fortuna, if you remember. In, in the final of the World of Sport Trophy. And it probably wasn't the, uh, the end, but it, was leading, it led up to the end of the bout. That sort of move by Naylor. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Nicely by Barry. Good counter move. At least he escaped all right, but whether the counter is on, we still don't know because he hasn't. Ah, uh, it isn't. Nice counter from Naylor there again. And some lovely rustling here by these two men. And down he goes for double eight Nelson. Over the top, folding press Naylor. And he's holding it. Oh, he nearly held it then. Double eight Nelson again, Naylor, but feet in the ropes by Barron. Oh, yeah, yeah. Near thing for both men there. And the applause from the crowd here. This packed crowd here at uh, the Sports Centre Crawley. Really appreciating this fast, neat wrestling. Right on the bell of round one now. Four, five seconds to go. Robbie Barron of Sydenham. Now at 13 stone, when we first saw him about three or four years ago, he was uh, 11 10. But funnily enough, he's still extremely fit, healthy, and really keeps in training. Ambition is the middleweight title of Great Britain, which is held, of course, at the moment by Brian Maxine. And there he has a smile, some track from the back that he appreciated as much as everybody else at ringside. Round two, five rounds to go. One fall is the is the one that's necessary to decide this bout, and that's all. And they both know it, and they're both taking an awful lot of risks, and this is why it's becoming, what I hope, will be a really good bout, this one. John Naylor versus Robbie Barron. Barron, back to canvas now, in the side headlock. crossing there and the next war the referee you have very little trouble with this bout it's my bet reverse double knee but again that leg chop of Baron saves him so <laughs> Naylor shows Baron exactly what he feels like Quite quick enough in turning, attacking from the rear. Oh, reverse double leg Wilson attempt, but didn't come off at all. Naylor's feet didn't contact. Body scissors now, Baron. Naylor undresses it to a double leg lock. They're both legs interlocked. And Naylor the advantage at the moment. <laughs> Naylor keeps those hands on the, his opponent's knees, but he couldn't then. Baron trying to make a backbreaker out of this, but uh, Naylor can reach the floor. And back to Naylor's advantage. turn but I still nail it with the advantage and now he can make a backbreaker out of it and both men <laughs> no chance in fact it might hurt them as they released And again by Naylor attack, but see that left shoulder blade well One. off Barron's. Uh, 
And a single leg Boston Mailer. That's one of his fast moves, and it, it's there again now. He's trying for a submission already as early as the second round. Full Boston now. And a double leg Nelson follow up. Nice spin out. Beautiful spin out by Mailer. Perfect timing. Side head chance for Inhaler. Baron turns into it nicely, but there's still a strangle hold there. If Naylor wants it, he's got a minute in the second round. And it's Baron now with a wrist lever. Naylor just won't go down back to canvas, trying everything to prevent it. Back to canvas position, he finally makes it. The leg spread, Naylor. Half a minute. Oh, he. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and again, Naylor has it. That's it. He was warned though, by referee that, all right, just so much of that I'll take, but not too much. So he agrees to release. Seven seconds. And still, a position to get his man into a double leg Nelson. There it is, but way too late for this particular round. I think John Naylor was just trying to show the crowd exactly what he was going to do if the bell hadn't gone. There he is, John Naylor off again. Ten years amateur experience as a kid with the famous Billy Riley gymnasium in Wigan and turned part-time pro in 1970. Three four rounds to go, and remember, just one fall decides this contest of catch weight between Naylor and Baron. That's Baron with the dark hair, light trunks on the deck there, and nicely over the top. And Baron chance for a double leg Nelson now, folding press to Naylor, and it's a double leg Nelson again, but two near the ropes. And great stuff by these two boys, and the crowd here really loving it now. That's what they want to see, more speed, action wrestling. They're certainly getting it here this afternoon in this final bout of the afternoon's program. One way. So the figure four leg lock to Nele, his left hand right in the back for Baron, trying to hold him down, preventing him turning out of it. And it's a surfboard from the side, but a backbreaker possibly won't be efficient enough to worry Baron because he's got his head on the deck and almost bridging it there. And Naylor knows it and decides to pull the day on that move. <laughs> Fine tackle by Naylor, but I think it's in this time that, yes, he has. He was thrown off quite easily by Baron. Baron with a weight advantage here of over a stone, just a stone and three pounds. Nice, a bit mistimed his double arm from Naylor underneath, but the legs have through the middle rope. And again, Naylor almost pulls it off, but the Baron gets his feet on top of the middle rope to cause the break. What a lovely move, though, by both men. And the loser of this is really going to be unlucky. Inside leg hack. 
there it is, over the top. Weaver, red scissors counter by Naylor. And he's still got the hand lever. There it is, the double-handed lever there on the wrist. And now, relying just on the head scissors. And he shouldn't have. Or should he? <laughs> just, just under a couple of minutes to go in this third round. <laughs> Quick reminder from Naylor, he has control of the situation. Or has he? Backhammer now. Single finger into lock. Backhammer again, Naylor. Trying to get a double arm out of it, couldn't reach the other arm. He still can't. He'll never get a fall from there. Nice trip by Baron. And a double knee. Trying to break the bridge. He goes up again, he's asking for trouble. There he is. And a nice high monkey climb by Naylor, but he follows it through too, too late. Yeah, it's just a little too late. But he's still un <laughs> undressing the body scissors, and they agree not to go ahead with this move, which always ends in a stalemate. See you can from ringside here what Naylor is doing. He's got it. Oh, it's just the arm lock. Half a minute left. <laughs> Both men escaping beautifully. And Max Ward right up at the ropes to escape that on the bell of the third. And that, to me, and I'm sure to the fellows in the ring, Robbie Barron especially, perhaps, is a lovely sound to hear the really appreciative crowd applause after a really good round by both men. Robbie Barron of Sydney, four and a half years amateur, and the man who still keeps fit mostly by playing soccer, mostly in goal though, and golf. His speciality may be the drop kick, but we haven't seen him try it yet. Seconds away, round four. Round four, three to go. No score, of course, because this is a one-fall bout. Robbie Barron versus John Naylor. Folding press from the side, tried by Naylor. The Naylor with the blonde hair and the knee bandage. And the darker cross. Watch hold, slam, reverse, double knee hold as he tries to get this pinfall. The one that's necessary for the bout. Double arm stretch. Incorrect and into release. I'm not getting anywhere with this hole anyway, says Nana. Oh, one, back to the stomach. Nice one. Three, four, yes, to Paul Naylor, flying head scissors move. And another. Just the instep around the back of the neck. And again the butt to the stomach. Now could Baron be slowing just a little bit here? Oh, the fly again, but both men land. Oh, and Naylor landed wrong there. And could be a double knockout here. Could they make it? Six, seven. Naylor up and Baron just about up on eight. And again the butt to the stomach. Naylor almost as worried by the effect on his head as 
Baron is by the effect on the stomach. Ah, uh, very neat way to stop a posting. <laughs> but he switches it. And Naylor manages to stop before he gets there. Nice folding pressed by Baron. And this could be the one. He's got those arms pretty securely. And there it is. The call to three in the fourth. Baron the winner. And the first to applaud, John Naylor of Wigan. There he is, holding up Baron's hand. A lovely bout by both men. But Baron, the heavier man, just having a little too much weight advantage. Bobby Palmer to announce it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before announcing the position, can I say that you've seen wrestling at its best? And ladies and gentlemen, the non-star, the only four required, Robbie Barron. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give him a hand, John Naylor. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a heavyweight contest. Six five-minute rounds of one four, one submission or a knockout to decide. In the red corner, ladies and gentlemen, from Gillingham in Kent, Wayne Bridges. Give me a hand, please. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, in the blue corner, much pleasure. The British mid heavyweight champion, the Anglo Italian, Mike Camarino. Grapple fans, good afternoon to you and welcome to the Sports Centre here in Crawley in Sussex for another freestyle wrestling session. And we start this afternoon's programme with a heavyweight contest between Mike Marino and Wayne Bridges. Now, Marino, the king of the mid-heavyweights, once again goes up a heavyweight to take on one of the biggest men in the game. From Gillingham, Wayne Bridges at 16 stone 4. Uh, from the very start, Mike Marino on the right there in the darker trunks. There he is. Pitch back hair, darker trunks of Mike Marino. He's really got problems here. He's only 14 stone 13 in weight, a mid heavyweight champion of Great Britain. And he looks really tiny by comparison to the giant from Gillingham, Wayne Bridges. Six five minute rounds, one fall to decide. And in charge of the proceedings, Max Ward of Birmingham, the referee. In the case we're in trouble with identification, the, uh, the big white bandage on Wayne Bridges' right elbow will help. So Marino trying to slow this big man down for a little while with the head scissors back to canvas. Wayne Bridges trying to get into a bridge position to force his way out of the head scissors and he's made it. Oh, that big boy, this one. Mike Marino will need all his guile, skill, technical expertise here this afternoon. He's giving away just about a stone and a half. 
Yes, it was a, a very definite rip out of trouble for Wayne Bridges, but did you notice the way that Mike Marino Black took the landing? He was up almost before he was down. Side headlock now, Bridges. Now, these strength holds are the ones that are going to worry Marino. However powerful he is, he's got an awful lot of trouble against this really powerful man of six foot one, 16 stone four. And still, Mike Marino manages a counter into a backhammer. One minute left in this first round of six. And the first attempt to pin to the lighter man, Mike Marino. The he's holding the back hand with the opposite arm lever as well, but he gives up after two attempts. A few seconds to go now. Seven, eight. Well, there he is, Wayne Bridges from Chillingham. Six foot one of him, 16 stone four in weight. An amateur with Ashton uh, Club, a very famous club in London. And he was the middleweight. He was defeated then at the British champion, which wasn't a bad effort as an amateur. He didn't, it wasn't a title bout, unfortunately, so he didn't uh, count uh, on his record. But nevertheless, he always can remember that he did defeat the middleweight champion in Great Britain at the time. Second away, round two. So, Bridges, big smile on his face at the end of round one. Let's see if there's still that smile there in another few rounds. Five to go, one four to the side. And the headlock and stranglehold to Wayne Bridges on Mike Marino. Marino sitting on the canvas in the dark of trees. No. Makes even Mike Marino is a big, very powerful man. Looks so small, this fella. <laughs> Flying tackle by Bridges, and so Mike Marino holds it, but not for long. Cross press Bridges, and thrown off at two. Ooh, that could have been the end of the bout. A count of two from a flying tackle by the big man, Bridges. And a very near thing indeed for Marina there. The right, right elbow of Bridges, heavily bandaged. You see the padding under the bandage there to prevent any more trouble from his elbow, which has given him quite a bit of trouble ever since he came back from the United States and Canada, a 12 month tour over in, the, in North America. Now, Mike Marino can hardly reach the full Nelson.
if it's ever going to break again like it did a few weeks ago this afternoon could be the time but Bridges 16 stone 4 tearing at it from across the ring I don't know how it stands this frame side headlock Marino now this is Marino's hands the way his uh, fingers are really interlocked there, holding on that side headlock. Nicely out by Richards. Very nice. He just don't feel so good following it, but he's out of trouble for the moment. It's very seldom you can make Mike Marina lose his balance. He just did it then. The reverse grapevine follows up. Danger there. My Marino was just waiting for the referee's count of two before he bothered to raise a shoulder blade. So the two and ankle from the other side now by Bridges. One minute to go, round two. <laughs> and not too good a landing there by Bridges. Back from the apron of the ring. But not anywhere near our monitor here, which is covered with some padding. Side hitch of the three. Followed on quickly, still with the, the um, pull and grab it there. But I think he's left it a bit late for this round. He's got four seconds. travels all over the country of course I, I meet an awful lot of people at wrestling bouts and a lot of them tell me how much they like the light boys because of the fast action some like, like the heavy because they're big men and very powerful but they always like a type of uh, expert like Marino is Mike Marino is still one of the kings of this game seconds away round three Round three, four to go, one fall decided. Marino versus Bridges. Bridges in the light trunks with a bandage on his right elbow. And the follow down cross press now dangerous, but again Marino finds the strength to throw him. Again, manages to get him off on two and a half. Plenty of action in the early rounds of this part. For the people, the fans who love the lightweight boys, who really give us the action, they can't really complain with a preliminary contest like this, even though they're heavyweights in the ring. Again, Marino reaching for the great fire. Opposite arm, missed it, but goes for the neck. Marino. 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 Marino.
Spain will hold on to Marino. Nice turning. Out of trouble there by Bridges. And he's got, he's got the arm lock that he was after. He had to go via the wrist lever, but he's got the arm lock now. Oh, beautiful double arm there by Bridges from underneath. Dangerous for Marino, but again, he manages to slide out on two and a half. There's the appreciative crowd there, this packed to capacity sports centre here in Crawley. Not a seat vacant here. Really packed and really appreciative. I love to see the good wrestling. A lot of connoisseurs here this afternoon. free for the headlock. Had to release it eventually. The power throw and Marino <laughs> looks wrong as if to say, well, yes, you did that very, very nicely. You timed it to perfection. So again, Marino trying with a side headlock. Turns his man back to canvas. Less than a minute to go in the third. Okay, he can't follow that up because he hasn't got a room and he knows it, so he'll miss it. Half a minute left now. Nice quick tie with a trip with the other, other leg. And again, the reverse grapevine position with the toe hole holding it there. Right on the bell now of the third. who still trains with uh, the weights. He turned pro in 1964. And it was funny enough, it's his opponent here this afternoon in this preliminary heavyweight contest that started him off as a, a full-time pro, Mike Marino. Are you happy about something? <laughs> Second away, round four. On four, three to go. Wayne Bridges, one of the best-looking men in the ring today, and had a lot of girls calling to him. From the interval, hence the smile. One four decides this out of against Mike Marino. Yeah. 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 
Again, the full cross press, but again, Marino gets him off quite easily on one this time. All the moves, that, the counter moves that Mike Marino taught Wayne Bridges in the 60s. Can Wayne Bridges do them faster now? Beautiful catch. And he still gets him over the top on the cross press. Still the cross press is on and three it is. So the master still wins it, even though he's giving away a stone and a half. Marino the winner in round four. is a catch weight contest over six five minute rounds, two falls, two submissions, or one knockout to decide the winner. In the red corner, ladies and gentlemen, from Manchester, Steve Beffs. Give my hand please. Thank you. And the opponent, ladies and gentlemen, from New Cross, the European middleweight champion, the television personality, Mick McNally. So here it is, Grapple fans, the main bout of the afternoon. And if it's going to be anything like the bout we just witnessed at heavyweight between Bridges and Marino, well, then it'll be something to watch. Mike, Mike McManus of uh, New Cross London and Steve Best, formerly of York, now residing in Leeds, over six rounds, two to decide. Second away, round one. We've seen Steve Best take on McManus before, but Steve Best, of course, in 11 stone four, is giving away over a stone now to McManus. Hence, this is a catch weight box. Referee Max Ward still in charge. And you'll have to watch points for McManus. side of the ref. The camera saw it, but the referee didn't. So two folds, two submissions, or an account to decide this winner. You just never know what McManus is doing with a hand that you can't see. Max Ward, I think, spotted something. Nice throw, Steve Best. Lovely arm roll. <clears throat> and that kind of far up, hold from the front by McManus. Turning his man, wrestling so far except for that one hair pull. Ah, that again. Come on. Again, the punch there to the stomach. But of course, McManus's back is towards the referee. Going for a straight arm left, 
Let's decide the difference. So the foot counter to the years, perfectly legal. McManus may not like it, but it's okay. Nelson reached, bringing his man back to the canvas again. And a lovely bridge there by Steve Best underneath. And it's Max Ward using the ear treatment to separate them because they were on the ropes. But Bannis wouldn't let it go. So Max Ward has his own way, method of dealing with it. Maybe Steve Best will take his cue from Max Ward there in the year treatment. Less than a minute to go now in this first round. Lovely work, inverted work, beauty. But after the break... shoulder blades Much use McManus can appealing to the crowd. I don't think they'll, they'll help him. Steve Best, now residing in Leeds, formerly of York, the head teacher in mathematics in the boys' school, of course, in Osset, near Leeds, between Sheffield and Leeds, as it is. McManus still beefing. Second away, round two. Round two, McManus saying, as long as I'm in my half of the ring, why the hell can I stay in the middle? Max Ward won him back in his corner and rightly. Five rounds to go, two falls to the side. the beginning of round two, McManus has had to bring his big guns into action. That's, and the crowd don't like it. Bowling press McManus. Pretty easy one. Yes, it is. An easy pinfall to McManus in round two. And that's what the crowd think of that. The lady on the right doesn't like it a bit, but it was a perfectly legal pinfall, in fact. So quite happy with the situation, there he is, McManus, and waiting a little over his half of the ring now, because there's quite a few seconds to go before the bell will start the third. Second round, round three. And four rounds to go, as McManus comes in to make it a two-row win if he can. Steve Best hasn't had much chance to use his speed yet, but now maybe he'll show a little bit. Falling press again, the same move by Best. And he's held it. One each. Now they're happy. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. In our uh, own uh, three and equalizing form, Steve and Ben. Well, I don't know how many 
30 seconds that took Steve Best in that round. About 16, I believe. 16 seconds in to round three and the equalizer to Steve Best. One each now and three rounds to go. the bell, so he's got to get up and go, whether he likes it or not, McManus. Three rounds to go, one for each. And he's getting counted, and rightly. Nice throw, best can keep up this. Not happy, not happy at all. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, nice word. We're trying to break it. Break an illegal move up, but he didn't mean to do it quite as tough as that. Or did he? Well, a very nice tissue provided by the uh, lady at the ringside there. It's McManus wipes the sweat off with and throws back. But it's the left hand here to watch, not the right. The left hand on the throat. And there's still a, a loose lace on his right boot there, McManus. He's tucked in once already in this wrestling boat, but he's come out again. That could be dangerous. But the referee hasn't started yet. Hasn't noticed it. Ooh, oof. After the breakup, when Steve Best steps back from the ropes, as the referee tells him to, McManus takes his chance to, to deliver a very short-range jab. It's a nice arm roll of the uh, best that the third time he's tried it. And the step over toe hole to McManus. A smile back on the face as he has the advantage. <laughs> well, the nose treatment doesn't worry him so much as the ear treatment but it's still worrying him forcing him to release perfectly legal to punch your own hand if your hand happens to be near the opponent's chin, that's all right. On the way, the straight fingers to the start. He was up on his feet, so legal. He followed on, but not quick enough, and not accurate enough, and a drop kick from there by this. And, Be and McManus again complained that he was on the deck when that happened. And of course he was right. Best, if, in, in this case, was a pretty illegal move. But they don't mind because it's against McManus. One minute to go in the fourth. for a break. 
So the referee's going to break them. See if McManus gets his short range jab in again this time. He will if he can. <laughs> oh, a face slap. All he can reach. And he gets a public warning for it after the break. Right at the end of round four. First public warning to McManus. Just before the bell. McManus still beefing about something to Max Ward there. But he was the one that got the public warning. There he is. European middleweight champion. I just like there the public are all waiting for Steve Bess. And the Countess, as everybody calls the Countess, the lady with the TRE at the back in the third row there. She's always at every wrestling match in London. A wrestle, wrestling fanatic there. Two rounds to go. And one fall each with one public warning against McManus. Second away, round five. Round five. And the lace has been spotted now. But uh, an old McManus trick. McManus saying to us that that's a straight finger jab to the side of the face. Oh, Mr. Butt. Missed the follow up butt. <laughs> Oh yes, he really turned out. And McManus didn't go with the whip. Oh, the whip. Beautiful tie. Oops. And there's a beauty to McManus there. And that's folded best. It's doubled him up. It wasn't low, but it was low enough to this time of eight, nine. If he makes it, he's going to be very weakened. And McManus is going to fall on him in a folding press. And it'll be all over. There it is. All over in round five. But what a, a great effort by Steve Best there. And if it wasn't for that tremendous jab as he went past by McManus, he might still be there with a try. Bobby Palmer to announce it. It's over six five-minute rounds of one four, one submission or knockout to decide. In the red corner, ladies and gentlemen, from Peckham, London, Steve Gray. Give me a hand, please. Thank you. And the opponent, ladies and gentlemen, in the blue corner, from Rushton, Northamptonshire, Ken Joyce. Ken Joyce from Rushton, Northamptonshire at 11.12 versus Steve Gray at 10 stone 7, lightweight class, and therefore another catchweight bout. But this one with a difference I think we'll find. Second away, round one. Ken Joyce, although he's a stone and five pounds heavier, he's going to find Steve Gray quite a handful because of his speed. Now the master, Ken Joyce, <laughs> if he starts his trickery early, it's going to be really interesting to see how Steve Gray counters it. 
The trunks are not going to, the color trunks are not going to give us much, but the white socks showing above Steve Gray's wrestling boots will help us in most uh, shots, I think. Of course, if you have a color, color set, you can see very easily the, the dark difference between the dark red and the dark blue trunks, but on black and white. They look identical. Steve Gray with the uh, longer hairstyle maybe will help us. And the white socks showing above the boots. Still got it. No, he couldn't. After the fourth turn, he couldn't. Again, enjoy his time finding. <laughs> well, we've got the full Nelson on. And Ken Joyce's counter was to go over the tell him over the top, so he just climbs under the back. Now, can he do the same with Ken Joyce? the drop kick Joyce had stepped back before that happened anticipating it beautifully Full of counter attempt. So two minutes to go, one, one, and still Gray in that same armor. I'm afraid the only way to get out of it is to go right over the top. If Joyce gives him a chance. with the headlocks Mr. that's right right over the, no he's gone over the top but it didn't help him because Joyce was waiting for him he's topped with a attempted flying head scissors on the way which uh, spoiled the move just no way that Steve Gray can get out of this arm lock as long as Ken Joyce doesn't want him to uh, finally, he uses the ropes to go over. <laughs> well, the referee lets it go because. Uh, really, what can he do? It's perfectly illegal, of course, to use the ropes to your advantage like that. Some even use the shoulder of the referee, pull him over to use his shoulder. All the way back to the reverse double leg Nelson. We'll never hold him down from that. So Joyce releases. Ten seconds. The spread. Just for the trip. That's the only reason he wanted the spread. Right on the bell. Steve Gray of Peckham, Southeast London, the man who so many lightweights in his uh, bracket 
reckon is probably one of the greatest potentials in the lightweight class today. Two years amateur experience in Deptford, turned pro in 1970. Boxes as cool boy. His father, of course, was a well-known lightweight boxer uh, whose ring name was Fred Stein. And his ambition is still about with the lightweight champion of the world, George Kidd. Seconds away, round two. One, two, five to go, one, four decides it. Ken Joyce again comes into the attack on that Steve Gray left arm. But this time, not with an iron lock. He's holding the lever against the joint. Ken Joyce, left foot, instant, not around the back of the neck, but he gets that left arm in the knee. There's a counter, Gray, attempted counter by Gray. Now he's got three of the whole thing, a perfect escape there, just with the aid of that right foot. A jump, step over, leg lock, and didn't bother to follow on with the lock. Oh, oh, oh. Mistimed it, spun it over the top. Joyce folding press, but can't hold it. Well, can he double knee again? But Steve Ray has folded his arms inwards, and now he's rolled himself up into that little ball. And Joyce is going to find a lot of trouble finding a lead there. Yeah, he's gone. To a double hand, the toe hold by choice. There's <laughs> Gray again in the nut. Out of it nicely now. Notice how often Ken Joyce does that. The quick leg spread of his opponent and the push. And of course, his, his man is over the other side of the ring in no time at all. That's another quick one, too, from Joyce. To get the toe hold. And the toe and ankle. Close in drop kick. That choice up quick. Oh, well, they double arm with the. Not really a backbreaker because the feet are free. No. Not this one, no. Oh, Christ. <laughs> And the body scissors just finished. One. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see what uh, Gray makes of that. No, you see he. <laughs> He tried the same move as Joyce, but it didn't quite work similar. But this one he is doing. Joyce has, has not found the answer to this at all. One. Yes, of course, that's a point. That's what happened to the great George Kidd once. And he rolled himself up into a ball. His opponent, instead of trying to get him out of it, rolled him further into it. And a couple of vertebrae were in trouble. And he was out of wrestling for months following that. Still the body scissors by Gray. But still the back breaker by Joyce. Trying to get the bridge going. 
Eight seconds. And Gray's going to be saved by the bear here. had him in a really good backbreaker there but he wasn't his opponent wasn't saved by the bell Joyce had him there but the his opponent managed to just get out in the few seconds before the bell Ken and his brother Doug of course both steeped in the knowledge of and tradition of wrestling his father was also prominent in the promoting picture after emigrating to England in the late 30s from Canada Seconds away, round three. Round three, four to go. Gray attacking now. Gray with a long ha hairstyle. And the White Sox. And a full Japanese strong hold on. Gray mistimed it, but Joyce may not have with that double arm. No, it's still Gray out. Completes the roll. Uh, <laughs> Gray mistimed that again. But so easy to this time moves when you're up against a master like King Joyce. going all the way over. So he's showing he's pretty quick on the escape moves too. single pair of eyes off the ring. They just spellbound by this tremendous style of both these men, especially King Joyce, of course. A couple of minutes to go in the third. First four decides the sides. The only time they make a sound at all, as you notice, is appreciative applause. Paul Nelson now attempt. Paul Nelson by Joyce. And he held him, let him down on purpose there, Joyce, and Gray almost fell for it. Very near trouble for Gray then. Just got himself into that little ball in time. 
<laughs> well, that's another way. <laughs> oh, Ooh, that is another way. That will make Dre think twice before he gets rolled up in that ball again. Just a minute left in the third. And tries to deliver a base of the spine knee drop on Ken Joyce to retaliate. Doesn't really work, though. Joyce being a little too tall for him. Try that sort of plucky stuff with Ken Joyce, and you will be in trouble, Steve Gray. There's a little giddy up there after that one, but only 15 seconds to go. Nicely spun out just the same before he was going over Boston. Neither of them need worry this round. Okay. Okay. Ken Joyce sportingly picking up Steve Gray then. Despite the fact that um, the bell went at exactly the wrong moment for him. Steve Gray over in his opposite corner. to see if he's sweating with him out the choices. There he is. Not quite so much. There he is. He's got troubles now, especially if he starts getting a little bit uh, cheeky with it, as he did in that last round. Three, round four. Round four. Three rounds to go. No score, of course, because one fall decides this bout. Joyce versus Gray. Gray with a long hairstyle and the white socks showing. There he is on the right of the picture now. And for Gray to get this uh, figure four leg lock with Barr onto a man like Ken Joyce is not bad to start with. Right at the beginning of the round, too. Poised, ready to start the pinfall count. Then. Well, it's, it's a move that I don't think I've ever seen before. It looks fairly effective. It's holding Joyce head forward under the figure four. But I don't think he can get a, a submission with it. If he can't, he certainly can't get a pinfall with it. <laughs> anyway, Joyce finally out, and he's got a chance there for a Boston. Goes for the figure four leg lock instead. This time, no bathroom. And Gray escaping effectively. Yes, and Joyce often does that trick just as he, his opponent is sending him for a post. <laughs> Check, but Joyce up from it quick under his feet. And ooh, pile driver, yep, yeah, pile driver, fast pile driver, and a follow down reverse double knee hole in trouble for Gray as the experience once again takes over towards the end and wins with the one fall that's necessary. Ken Joyce in the fourth, Bobby Palmer to announce that win. One for the loser. Thank you to Bobby Palmer. And with a win for Ken Joyce over Gray, it's goodbye from all of us here at Crawley, this packed hall here at the Sports Centre. Have a good week.
Till next week.